My name is Blair Williams and I'm here today with Gene Bixler uh, in Boiling Springs on January 18th, 2017. And Gene, uh, um, we're recording today's interview, is that okay with you? <laughs> okay. And uh, so to start with, can you tell me how your family uh, first came to Cumberland County? Well, both my parents were born in Cumberland County. My father was born in uh, Cummins Town, and my mother was born in, in Centerville. Okay. About two miles apart. And do you, do you know, uh, were your grandparents farmers, or? My grandparents, on my father's side, they were farming. Okay. And on the mother's side, um, my grandfather, Myers, was in the lumber business. Hmm. So that was their occupation. Okay. And then what, um, what, what did your parents do for a living? Well, dad was an architect, mother was a housewife. Okay. And <clears throat> dad's well work was uh, principally in the area. At the very beginning, he worked with uh, Majestic Masters in Harrisburg. And, uh, he worked on uh, a bridge uh, construction down in uh, Washington, D.C., mm. the structural engineering. And when he uh, left them, <clears throat> eventually he started up his own business. And some of the things that he designed in the area, the immediate area, was their clock tower mm -hmm. and the high school. He and his son worked on that, his son Jack. And then uh, he did the Lutheran Church. Those are the more principal ones. St. John's. St. John's Church? Yes, St. Mm -hmm. John's Lutheran. Mm -hmm. And those are all in Boiling Springs? Yes. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Well, maybe I did. <laughs> now, uh, what, what was the name of his architectural firm? Just John K. Bixler. Senior. It came to, became Bixler and Bixler when my brother joined him. Hmm. Hmm. Did they design anything in Carlisle? Any Carlisle buildings? Did they do, were they architects in there also? He might have done some private homes. Mostly private homes. Yes. Do you remember your Myers grandparents? <clears throat> I know you gave you we copied pictures you have of the tannery, yes, I'm which is there were well, the only photos we have of a tannery in Cumberland County. Mm -hmm. Do you do you remember any of that or just no? That was gone. That was way before you. Yes. <laughs> but uh, yes, that uh, my grandfather and his father, I guess, uh, were engaged in that. They, they, okay. It was a long time. His father, my great grandfather, came from Germany. And some of those buildings still survive, mm -hmm. the tannery buildings. Well, just the old bark shed, they call it. Bark, okay. In the home. And there was one building that had been, uh, that was moved within the property itself. Mm -hmm. And I guess that may have been a part of it originally. They call it the shop now. So where were you born? I was born uh, well, in Carlisle, locally, in the hospital. Yeah. But I grew up in Boiling Springs. Oh, so you remember Boiling Springs? That's from the, your first memories of living here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, the, in the current, your current house? No, uh, that was where, you know, Bob Line, where he lives now, that's where I grew up. Oh, okay. Until I was 12, and then we moved up here to Kaufman Street. So that's. Bob Line is on Front Street. He's on Front Street. Yeah, one of the, the brick house. Mm -hmm. The one with the hat painted there. <laughs> that was one of the houses that was built using brick from the uh, Catherine Furnace. Probably so. Mm -hmm. yeah, the upper part was more shingles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, brick and shingle. Mm -hmm. What was the lake like when you were a child? How do you remember the lake being? 
Well, we didn't have as many ducks. <laughs> <laughs> and so Mr. Kirikoff had set up some pens, you know, I built out from this property. But, uh, you don't remember the park, do you? Bagley. Yes. Bagley. Uh -huh. I remember the swings they had with the maypole type sprint. Mm -hmm. These swings you hold on to and everybody whirled around. <laughs> was the trolley still running? No. no that was the, the later years of the park. Mm -hmm. Was there any activity in the dance pavilion then? Not that I recall. It, it, I it had to be converted into a, a something else, or was it still a pavilion? But there was some sort of feed mill or something there, wasn't there? Well, there was a feed mill, the dance hall part. That that was already changed. Mm -hmm. That had been in the feed mill and a number of different things. And what was in the building that's now the Appalachian Trail building? That had been a restaurant. It was a restaurant then? Mm -hmm. What type of restaurant was that? Well, for the visitors <clears throat> come in and get a bite to eat. So there were still, well, visit, still a lot of visitors that. coming to visit the park, and did they have boating? No, uh, not the, not when I came along. No, and, was, and I understood they had swans too. On there the were swans. The, yeah. So the Kirchhoffs had wildlife. I, I don't I don't know the history behind those. Mm. How did you d develop your interest in caring for animals? I know whenever any in, injured. Animals found in <laughs> Boiling Springs, they yeah. usually bring them to you, including me. <laughs> well, I started with birds, I guess, injured birds. And how did, that was just an, something you learned on your own? Yes. Mm. I guess I started back when my mother found me in the kitchen with one of her bowls on the floor and I was rolling a caterpillar around with it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's where it began. Do you do you work with a vet a veterinarian too? Like if it's a more serious, do you know I how to? Have, yes. do, you, do you know how to put? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Out here in uh, Boiling Springs Animal Hospital, and also the Small Animal with Hospital in Carlisle. Okay. Mm -hmm. She knows how to do a lot. I know, but she I, has a duck with a prosthetic foot right now that she puts on every day. <laughs> Is that something you invented? <laughs> it was done with a 3D printer. <laughs> really? Yes. Mm. Yes. Oh. <laughs> well, it was brought to my door, and I was asked if I could help take the line off of it. It was tied up in the fishing line, oh. and it had cut off the circulation in the foot, and it also it had a hook in its mouth. But the person who brought it took care of the hook, and then uh, when she came to the door, she wondered if I could help take off the fishing line. And I said, I would help her if I could. So she opened up her coat, and there was the duck with foot dangling by a tendon. Just a, <laughs> so I said, well, that's more than I could handle. So then we went out to the vet, and she finished the job. And I didn't know if it would make through the operation. But anyhow, it did, and I had the duck back. Tripper. So where do you keep the <laughs> duck? Do you have, you have an eye to the side? I keep it in the laundry in the winter time. Oh, oh okay. And then it, I put it out good days, yeah. And it can walk with this? With the prosthesis. Pros prosthesis. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But in the summertime, he's out. Mm -hmm. But he yeah. can't be released in the wild. No. He wouldn't survive. No. Mm -hmm. His foot has to be changed each day. Do you have any other any other animals now in your home? Just well, right now, I, I have the parakeet. That's all. But, and the, the dog. Mm -hmm. Butterflies. Uh, yes, I have a monarch, which <laughs> is surviving longer than we anticipated. A friend brought the uh, chrysalis to me, and it hatched out, and I made uh, a habitat for it. And uh, it was too cold to release. Mm -hmm. It's about that time of the year when they migrate. It was too cold to release, and so I just uh, made a habitat for it, and uh, it's still surviving. That was before Thanksgiving, in the fall. So if it lives until spring, you can release it? If it lives that long. <laughs> <laughs> it's unusual it has lasted this long. Usually it's just a few weeks. Oh, okay. The out of doors. Of course, they have predators, too, outdoors. Mm -hmm. So this is something you've done since you were a child? 
for you well, and Ellen. I, I guess we I've had that uh, affection for wildlife and all. Mm -hmm. I can remember back when we were kids, we even had a goldfish. And when it died, we had a burrow for it. They go across and had a service. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it goes a way back. Mm -hmm. you know. Jean used to have a quail. When I first met her, she had a pet quail who was very, was very famous, named Cracker. And she would visit Jean Craig Court, George, in the summer, and Cracker is named in one of Jean Craig George's books. Oh, okay. How to talk to your animals. We got to know Jean through her mother. The Craigheads moved out where Dr. Purcell is now. Okay. And uh, she and Mrs. Craighead, uh, my mother and Mr. Craighead became friends. And uh, her mother would write to Jean and tell her about Cracker. And crack, she wanted to meet Cracker. And so <laughs> when she came in to visit her mother, she came in and met Cracker. And uh, then she decided she'd write about him in her book. Mm. So. so did you spend time at the Craighead home? I'm sorry? Did you did you spend some time at the Craighead with Jean? No, no, no. no. It was just through her mother. We through her mother? Friends, yes, mm -hmm. and she would come with her mother when she would come to visit. Mm. Okay. And we corresponded from time to time. Mm -hmm. Do you still have any letters from Jean Craighead, George? I don't think I do. Did you know the Landises who lived here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Warren and Mrs. Landis. They and attended the Lutheran Church. That's how we got. Well, they were Lutheran. They were busy, you know. They. And she was quite a quilter. I guess so. I wasn't familiar with that. No. Oh. But they were nice. nice were people. you at the auction? No, I didn't. No. Go. no. Well, those quilts went all over the country. Yeah, are you here? No, I was oh. not here. My goodness. We have a couple of the quilts at the Historical Society that were made here. Uh -huh. From across the street, right? Yes. She gave them. Mrs. Gerhardt bought some and then gave them. Well, Mrs. Landis gave them, I believe, to Mrs. Gerhardt. Mm -hmm. And then Mrs. Gerhardt gave them to the Historical Society, and then I bought a basket of nothing at Gerhardt's sale, and in it was that bag of all the pieces for the quilt at the Historical Society. The extra pieces, so yeah. Jean raised pheasants for us. We bought this house, and Christopher's was a field. And Kenny wanted to make a baseball field for the kids, really. And he cut it down and came across these pheasant eggs. And the mother, we watched it, and the pheasant never came back. So Jean took the eggs for us incubated them in her living room with her mother shaking her head and her patient parents very patient parents her mother would just like go down and I'd say well where's Jean she'd just shake her head like oh no and I would think Jean's got another pet so she, and her mother would laugh she had this wonderful laugh she'd just just totally laugh and shake her head but the pheasants hatched when we were having a party up here with all these kids from the Junior Civic Club of Carlisle in our yard, and they all went down to Jean's living room and sat in the living room to watch the pheasant hat. <laughs> so Jean's mother just shook her head, and everybody comes in, and the whole living room's filled with kids watching the pheasant hatch. It was like perfect timing. <laughs> yeah, it was a farm show in Jean's living room. <laughs> did, they, did they survive then? Yes, the I released them mm -hmm. down here. But then there's many predators around. You know, it's just, yeah. uh, they've all disappeared. Yeah. What was Bo what was Bowling Springs like when you were growing up here? Like, was there a business? Was there a bus Were there businesses? Well, we had the grocery stores and the homes. On uh, Third and Walnut was Schaefer's, Mervyn Schaefer. It was a grocery store. They'd set it up in their front room. You know, mm -hmm. and it was Dinsmore. Dinsmore? On 3rd Street in the, the big building, the tall building. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bob Weiss, or Weiss, 
What does he on have? Front Street. They can be at a grocery store where they uh, do oh, business quite now. Quite a few neighborhood grocery stores. Mm -hmm. And then we have the drugstore. Where was that? Oh, that's where the cafe is now. Oh, that mm -hmm. drugstore. Yeah. How, where was the post office? Uh, Mrs. Peffer had, uh, she was a widow, she and her son Bruce had the post office in their home there on the corner of uh, Walnut and First Street. Mm -hmm. That's a private home now. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yes, we were both there and uh, Mr. Roop was the man who would meet the train over there and bring the mail. And sometimes in the spring they'd bring peeps. Oh, peeps would come <laughs> they'd by have trains. boxes, you know, with the little holes in it, and you could see their little peak, peaks, you know, peeking out through and <laughs> a lot of chirping. Did you get one? Were you allowed to get one? No, they, they probably came with one of the farmers. <laughs> they ordered them, you know, that they would deliver them by the train, and Mr. Rook would bring them. What was in the tavern? Was the tavern operating as a business? Um, when you were... I no. don't remember too much about that except when uh, Charlie Moyer had his drugstore there on the corner. There was a drugstore too mm -hmm. in there. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I guess Dr. Davis was the one who started the restaurant there. It, yeah, I guess. The, the later, you know. The, that was later. The, the beginning of the current restaurant. Was, I don't know if they've had apartments there all that time or not. I don't know. Yeah, there used to be apartments upstairs. But we used to catch the bus there to go to Carlisle. We were oh, the bus, the bus came through and... From Mechanicsburg. Mechanicsburg. Mm -hmm. We used to ride the bus also down to Harrisburg. It went that far. How about train? Was there, was the train station? Yes. You could take trains? And, and, uh, Edward Raffensperger was the station master there. That's gone now. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dad rode the train when he worked in Harrisburg. And this is... Uh, Ellen Renneman, she, she worked in Harrisburg. She would catch so, the train. So they commuted by train. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. When was this? The uh, time period? A uh, time period? Uh, 30? Well, I was just a youngster. I guess I, before I started school, maybe. My dad worked in Harrisburg. And during the Depression, uh, he worked with... Uh, the postmaster, I think he was on 2nd Street, Mr. Dreger. Mm -hmm. He was in the, I'm not sure which house it was. But Mr. Webb had a grocery store there on 3rd Street too, in later years. Mm -hmm. What do you remember of the Bookers in the Booker Hat Mansion? Yeah, well, we rented from uh, Mr. Jared Booker. Helen Hall's. Oh, your first house you rented yes, from them? Yes, there on First Street. We rented $18 a month. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you ever go, were you ever able to go into the uh, mansion when you were young? No. My it father was... would go up there. He would go up to pay his rent. Okay. And he got to know Mr. Booker. And then they attended the Lutheran Church. We got to know him. Was that Henrietta? No, this is Mrs. Ja. Lady Mrs. Booker. Helen. Helen Hall. Helen Hall Booker. Okay. Uh -huh. Was she was she the one who was the organist? Mm -hmm. At your church? Yes. Okay. And William, their son, lived up on the hill in a little cottage type. You know, this small cottage, yeah. Oh that's okay. That's where William lived. Mm -hmm. And then they had the waterworks. That's gone now. Do you remember that uh, there being a building, I that. the building of waterworks? Because mm -hmm. in the winter time, when we sled, the older teenagers, they were allowed on that hill. That's the a good hill. Let, let the little ones on. What the, the hill that came down to the mill was that was that a sledding hill? Yes, that they, they sledded there. That was a steep hill, mm -hmm. and because of the waterworks there, that was open, and uh, you want to be sure you missed it when you came down the hill. <laughs> <laughs> was one one fellow did lose his life, not sledding, but he had fallen in there and he didn't survive it because of big wheels turning, you know. Oh, okay. 
in the water or down the outlet. And then one of Mr. Booker's helpers, Sherman, he lived there. He lived above there somehow in the, the waterworks. Noisy as it was, that was his place. Now, did that building burn? Or how, what happened to that building? Was it just demolished? I don't remember that it burned. Okay. They probably just updated it. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when uh, they filmed Route 66 in Bowling Springs? I did. Uh, I wasn't there. I think I was out of town then. No. Oh, okay. And they did that. That was. But I think it wasn't Virginia Carpenter the baby they used in that film. Um, I think there were several babies they switched they? switched around, but she may. I think I she think was she one of them. And we slid it on uh, Front Street, the hill there, at Hess, Hess's building. Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah, there is a We slid it on Fourth Street. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what what years are we talking about? Did you say this? This is in thirty. Maybe in, back, I guess. Uh, the thirties. Late thirties. Late thirties. Yeah. Okay. Maybe before. So the was the bank in operation. I think it was. I had, at that time, I, I wasn't saving except my pennies. But the Coughlin's, the Coughlin family was, was gone by then. You yes. don't remember anything? No, Hesses he died lived early. there. Pardon? Hesses lived there. When you, okay. And he had something to do with the bank, right? He could have. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that. But they lived in the Coughlin was house. It, uh, was it Kenny Hess that was the uh, attorney? That runs in my mind. Well, the current, your current house, when was it built? I think around 1910. 1910, okay. That was the date from one of the rafters. And that's on Kaufman Street, right? Corner of Kaufman. Corner, and Ricks. corner of Kaufman. Because mm -hmm. that, uh, that was a later addition to the village, Kaufman Street. Were there many other houses on that street? When we moved there, mm -hmm. uh, to the west, there were no houses between us and the corner house where the Firestones lived. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a sister and brother lived there. They had neither married, and uh, they lived in that house. But then that was an open field, and there was one man up the street who farmed part of it. He grew hot peppers, row after row of hot peppers. <laughs> he would take them in his lunch pail. He liked hot peppers. <laughs> but uh, Mr. Brenman had owned that, and he he divided it then. So they. How about Mary's house? That came on later. Mm -hmm. It was there when we moved in. I don't. What's the date on that? Nineteen sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. And you remember the people who lived there? Calamans. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. There was Mrs. Ella Calaman. How about Vincent? What can you tell us about Vincent Calaman? He was an outdoors person. He liked to hunt and hike, and he had a cabin out in the mountain. He was sort of a history buff, wasn't he? Yes, and with trains. He had quite a collection of pictures on trains. Train, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Covered bridges. Mm -hmm. He had different interests, and uh, he, his mother was very hard of hearing. He lived in with her, and then he had married, and they had a daughter. Oh, okay. Vincent had a daughter. Uh -huh. And uh, he was in the service, and he finally uh, succumbed to cancer. Okay. He would go down to the pool, there was a lifeguard down there, Jake uh, Hutchinson, I think it was. And they'd lift weights. <laughs> oh, they lift They kept their physique. Oh, okay. But uh, Jake was a lifeguard there. He made a lot of scrapbooks. Mm -hmm. They sold those at the sale. Yeah, they got scattered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He seemed to to, copy, to get pictures from other people that he copied because he was interested in photography, and then he made up scrapbooks. Uh -huh. We have a couple in our collection. 
that he had made. Mm -hmm. But then, that, Wilma's husband, Vincent Calvin. Vincent. Wilma, 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 Wilma. What about her? Was that her husband, Wilma? No, Wilma was a sister. Sister. Uh, it was brother and sister. Mm -hmm. And he passed away. He willed the, the house to Wilma and her husband Chet. Left her Chet. Mm -hmm. That's and Wilma lived there. Well, where she Wilma died and he was mm -hmm. sold. With a little interim and then Mary. Yes. <laughs> now, did you spend a lot of your time at the pool as a child, or was that? At the pool? Yes. Uh, I learned to swim down the creek. Okay. <laughs> first, <Yeah. laughs> over by the railroad. There was a swimming hole, and uh, we learned from the older ones to swim paddle, mm. ducky paddle. <laughs> mm. So then, uh, oh, I might have been around six or seven, I guess, when I started going to the pool. And the Red Cross, they gave swimming classes in junior uh, life saving. And uh, I had told <laughs> Mary that how I got my first ticket, season ticket. It was six dollars. And I saved my pennies. And I took my bag full of pennies, six hundred of them, over and gave them to Jack Cooper. <laughs> and I don't know if he ever counted them, but anyway. He trusted you though. <laughs> six dollars. But uh, well then I think I told Mary too about the flag. We were within sight of the pool, and when it was time to go home, my mother had put the American flag out in my bedroom window, <laughs> and we knew it was time to come home. She would take it in? Huh? Would she take it in or put it out? When it she put it out when it was time to come home, Okay. and then take it in again. <laughs> and we'd go sledding. We would sled down the hill there along the lake, and it was time to go in, she'd turn on the porch light. That way she didn't have to keep coming after us. <laughs> did your mom ever take, did she take you to the pool or you just went down by yourself? I think I went with Jack, oh, my Jack. brother. He was older. How, how many years older? Pardon me? How many years older was he? Four. Four. Mm -hmm. Oh. He was two when they moved to Boiling Springs. It was through Mr. Raffensperger. I don't know if you had known him or not. Uh, he was a church member up there at Lutheran Church. But anyhow, uh, Dad and Mother knew him through uh, some of his family. He had lived up in Centerville where Mother was born. And they come out to visit one evening, and they, Raffensburgers talked Dad and Mother into moving out to Boiling Springs, and this house was available to rent, and so we did. They had lived in on Lowther Street in Carlisle mm. in an apartment. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that became home. Mm -hmm. Mother liked to garden and raise flowers. Roses. Roses, yes. Roses. And uh, we being near the railroad, we had a lot of tramps stop by. Oh, okay. For, mm -hmm. for sandwich. They'd ride the railroad, okay. Uh -huh. They'd get off over there. And they had telephone poles and things marked so they could get a good sandwich. <laughs> Just like the Appalachian Trail now, Gene, every now and then takes in somebody hiking the trail. <laughs> takes care of them. <laughs> Gene, share your picture of your dad with the garden. Okay. So interesting. Now, when we moved there, across from us, oh. was what is now is the parking lot. Oh. That had been a flower garden. The parking lot by the lake. Her dad painted that. Yeah. Her dad's an yeah. artist too. So is Jean. Yeah, I've seen a poster, a picture of that. Mm -hmm. that, that, yeah. that, that, the, that garden was called Community Garden or something. Yeah. And then was there was there a business over yeah. near Allenberry that grew flowers like gladiolias and things? Uh, up and up and near, near where Allenberry. Did you put my purse. I had something in there. I brought a couple of pictures along I'll show to you. I didn't know if you were interested. It looks like uh, it is the flower garden. 
There are family pictures on here, but in the background, you can see the garden. Is that the garden? And the flower. That's in, that's in the painting. Yes. But is there a way you can get some of these on? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So th that was planted just by people in the community? Was it? Well, I, uh, I'm not sure about that because. Um, whether the school had anything to do with it. It seems as though it was divided into plots. Mm. And then, uh, I think these, I don't have them dated. I thought he told me, your dad, that, that they what? had, that the school children did it. I thought And it was a competition the over the summer, and then they would award prizes for the prettiest gardens at the end of the summer. Oh. I think that's what your dad told me, but you know that was a long okay. time ago. That sounds possible. I thought I think that's what they did. Tied up somehow with it, and the kids would take care of them during the summer. Now you said about gladiolas. Now this is. Uh, he was like a business. That was my brother. That looks like uh, different flowers. I think these were somewhere up on Allenbury Hill, oh. up in that, up over that over in that area. That's your brother, and yeah, he's in the garden. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> this shows a towpath along along the lake. And here was a little hump bridge. Yeah. And we used to ride our bikes over that, like the kids today, you know, jump over. It. Is that, is that still the same? But it's, uh, you can't tell if the flowers there. I don't, flowers weren't there at that time, but it gives you a view of the uh, lake. That's from your house on Front Street. That was yeah, and then uh, our neighbor, Mr. Wonders, he kind of gardened it. Uh, I wouldn't say farm it, but he, he put the whole lot out. And I think this may be. Uh, part of some of, of the things that he raised, but I brought this. You can see the powerhouse oh, on that. Okay. Tree is so small. That's the powerhouse. Now these two, I brought along so that you could see where we lived on Front Street, in back of the house, were these buildings. You'll see those in the background. These were some of the playmates. <laughs> are they still there, those buildings? No, that's what I wanted to point out. They're not there anymore. There were some little boys started a fire, oh. and they burned. And uh, my mother, <laughs> she, in her excitement, she went out and saw that the eggs didn't get fried. My brother raised chickens. <laughs> she went out and gathered the eggs. <laughs> <laughs> and they kept our house hosed down with the garden well, They hosed hose. your house down. It was close to you then. Mm -hmm. Well, they were pretty close. Yeah. Was this the Front Street house or was this? The Front Street house. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, those buildings were like garages were and, and barns or? They're really good timber to burn. <laughs> they they weren't old. they weren't residences. They no, were, no, they like, were in back. They were. Um, they were Dougals were, live on Kaufman Street, and it was back of their house that they it was part of that property. Is that where that large empty field is right now? No, I think the field was still mm -hmm. there. Yeah, that was Palm Springs. I don't know if that. If that field was still a part of that uh, McCoy's property or not. But the size of those, they were either close to the house or maybe more part of that. Then you, where did you go to elementary school? Up at, the, uh, up at the Raider High School. Where the high school is yes. now? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. 
Oh, now yeah. tell them about the gym and lunch and oh. how you did lunch. And come on, because I love it. I used to go down in the basement of that building and tell the teachers that, and they would say, you're crazy. And I said, no, it's not. Our gym was, you know, ground level with a concrete floor. And then they had locker rooms. You had a couple steps up into the locker room. But it was very primitive. They had bleachers along the one side. And uh, they had, uh, I remember they did some gymnastics for the public. Different, well, they had their basketball games too. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in the hallway before you go down into the gym, that was uh, our cafeteria. And the they were hallway. planks on horses, you know, just planks across and one light bulb up in the ceiling. <laughs> you carried your lunch then? Did you carry Sometimes I, they had a, a little well, they, cafeteria there. Well, they did. But uh, many times I'd carry a bag lunch. Mm -hmm. And then when we got old enough to have bicycles, well, if we had time enough, we'd ride home and have lunch, get on our bikes and come back. Who, who were some of your teachers? Well, I started out first grade with Miss Barber, first and second grade. Same teacher? Same teacher. Mm -hmm. And she lived across from the Lutheran Church in that uh, corner building on the Second Street, Third, third Street in Walnut. And uh, she was a maiden lady. I think she lived with her brother. And then I had a Miss Failer for third and fourth. And then for uh, fifth, I think I had Miss Hertzler. She married a stone. And then um, oh. sixth grade, I had Mrs. Snyder. And she and her husband lived in that house on the corner. They're fixing it up now on the corner of third and Walnut. Mm -hmm. Someone from like Maryland, I think. Is yeah, it's. Right. Um, Matt's house. Uh, Matt's. Matt's house. Oh, okay. Yeah, he laid that uh, brick walk. Mm -hmm. But one thing I remember about her, she might have been a stern teacher, but every day at the beginning class, each one of his, the pupils had to have learned a scripture verse. In public school. In public school. Mm -hmm. We all had to recite a scripture verse every morning. A different one. And then she had prayer. <laughs> yeah. How well, many were in your class? Oh, I don't know. It was a good sized class. They had double desks that time. Like 20? Anyhow. Mm -hmm. To hear, I'm just, as a teacher, I'm thinking, okay, every student has to recite a scripture that's different. <laughs> we're talking 30 minutes to get that done. <laughs> no. Yeah. And then uh, for her reading class, we had uh, long benches that we'd sit on up uh, front. We'd come up front to read for our reading class. And we'd have art class. But uh, it was interesting how the school has changed. <laughs> but it wasn't a one room school. No. Mm -hmm. He was consolidated. They tore down that old part. He was a consolidated school. Yes, yeah, consolidated. I think we had one of the first first ones in the county. Uh -huh. But there had been a country school out there on the hill where you go out to Brymesser's, the farm, mm -hmm. Brymesser's farm. Mm -hmm. The houses there was up on the right on the hillside. That had been uh, a school. Mm -hmm. And my neighbor, um, Carolyn Darhauer had gone there to school. And then for junior high, did you go to the main school there or as well? Yes, it was all in the one school. It was all one big high building. School. Mm -hmm. Miss Lackey, I think everyone knew Miss Lackey. She worked in the office with the uh, principal. She was. Uh, She's everybody's friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jack used to say how sometimes he'd be late. They would, uh, they had a, a trapping business, my brother and another boy. 
they'd have muskrats in the lawn. And sometimes he'd be late for school and he would say how Miss Lackey would be standing up at the head of the stairs with the pink slip waiting for him. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was late. Where would they trap here in this area? Oh, they went out miles. Oh. Yeah, but they did. They did the race. Race? Uh huh. I think a couple other boys, Roy Lutz and uh, Richard Hess, I think they did the lake. Hmm. But uh, my brother and Ray McGuff, they would go out and set their traps and then go back in the morning. And they went into Rumberg, there's with the pelts mm -hmm. in Carlisle, in there near the uh, Wenger's Meats. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh -huh. in Rumberg, could you, on the race, could you boat on the race? Mm-hmm. Oh, that was so nice. <laughs> and we could skate on the race, too, oh, way up, up to the pond. Up, up at the dam. Uh -huh. Beyond that. There was a skating It's filled or? in with silt now, mm -hmm. but we could go up beyond that. We used to swim up there too with the cows, <laughs> Drumgold's cows. <laughs> but, uh, well, the early swimming hole you talked about, was that over... Uh, the swimming hole? Or the swimming hole, you mean? Yeah, you used to talk about swimming yeah, in the creek. Yeah, when you go across the bridge, you turn left and go down along there. That's along was, the far side of the creek. That's where the swimming hole was. Uh -huh. It was down in there. In yellow breeches. Mm -hmm. uh, that rope, that swing rope was there when we moved here for a number of years down there. They had, the kids had a big um, rope out on the tree. They'd swing out and uh -huh. splash in that hole. The same place, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> then when you graduated, what did you do? You graduated from After I graduated, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I went on to uh, Penn State. And, uh, you went to Penn State? Penn State, mm -hmm. yeah. That was a year uh, following the wars when they had, I think it was about four or five hundred freshmen that came, that came in. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes the military, they were over in like, some of the barracks. They were stationed there when they would go down past our dorm and you know, hip one, two, three, hip one. <laughs> <laughs> that was the, just a year or so that they were there. What did you major in? Art. Art? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talking about the military, um, when I was a youngster growing up, we had an apple tree out front and it was twisted, you know, and with years it began to lean and lean and it made it wonderful place to climb, you know. Well, I guess they marched them from the, the barracks, I don't know, but they had these battalions of soldiers that would come down. We'd see them coming down Front Street. Really? And maybe I shouldn't tell this, but we would line apples across the, across the street and see if we could catch them. <laughs> <You know? laughs> And this they was on Front Street in Boiling Springs. Right across from, you know, the house there. They come right by the house, and if we saw them coming, we put, put apples across. <laughs> and they didn't miss a beat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think, what do they call it, bivouac? Bivouac. Bivouac. I don't know. They went out into the field somewhere. Oh. Across the, across the bridge. Hmm. So. And we got into mischief. Gene, I brought, uh, I brought your old uniform along that you had donated to the Historical Society. Could you tell us a little bit about some of this? This is accession 2015-12 in the museum, so there's a little bit of padding, so if you can just... I forgot a lot of that. I know. You don't have to go into well, detail. One thing. Well, there's my handkerchief. Well, that's some <laughs> stuffing. <Yeah>. Stuffing. <laughs> Why, <clears throat> they started the troop in Sarah Farling. She lived up there in that first bungalow at the high school, you know. Oh, okay. And uh, she started the scout troop. And but uniforms weren't available, so our mothers had, had to sew them. They had to make uniforms. And uh, they got the material, material for us because it would all one, uh, it, they'd all be alive then. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is, I had told Mary that I had, I was going to take that off. <coughs> she said, leave it on, huh? But it's uh, a cherry seed. 
peach seed rather, peach seed, <clears throat> that why he collected them, I don't know, but my grandfather Bixler, in his little shop, he had these peach seeds. And so one time I didn't have anything to do, so I got in his shop and I used a pile on there for things and I made a little basket. Oh. Okay. And I just put it on there, kind of like a little charm. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm going to have this all messed up. That's okay. These were the uh, patches. The different mm -hmm. patches that we worked for. Mm -hmm. There's the photography. <laughs> is there one with ducks on it or wildlife? No. There is a wildlife <laughs> patch on there. <laughs> it's the owl. That must have been for reading or something. And there's the hammer and paintbrush. Now, did your mother sew these or did you sew these patches? She, she sewed some of them on. Some were on. I didn't have them all on. I just had them in a packet. Your mother made the dress, right? She made the dress. Uh -huh. And then these. There's a bird. <laughs> but the scissors was for sewing. I just forgot what they all represent. Where did this, where did the girl scouts meet? In homes or No, church? I think it was at, uh, I can't remember if it was at school. At school. That we met. Well, the, the style of that fabric and the style of the dress is because of the war. Hmm. It was during the war. Yeah, they couldn't have metal. Those dress, that style dress was only around for a couple years. Mm -hmm. And then they changed it, but they changed it just because of the war. Very interesting, the history on that and dress. Then, uh, pattern. Hmm. I guess you don't have a picture. Uh, yeah. have it I had a picture. Mother took a picture of uh, two other girls, the Schaefer girls, Miriam and Catherine. And... Uh, Marion, I guess it was, Marion and Catherine. And their mothers, their mother had made theirs. And they made them large enough that as we kept growing. <laughs> <laughs> so on the picture, it looks, uh, we look kind of swallowed up by them. <laughs> yeah, they made them plenty the big. mother made most of my clothes, you know, and, and like I say, she would make them large for me to grow into. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was one way of saving. So that's, uh, that was the biggest thing around Bowling Springs, you know, as far as uh, organizations. Did you sell cookies? Yeah, we sold cookies. Really? <laughs> Girls yeah. got cookies back then? Back then. And then, uh, how much were they a box? Do you remember? I remember. <laughs> yeah. We had to sell, uh, well, we didn't have to, but the school sold magazines. And we used to canvass the neighborhood selling magazines until they had more reading material than they needed. <laughs> <laughs> so. Now, was your brother a Boy Scout, or? Yes, he was a Boy Scout. There was a Mr. Kitzmiller. He was a teacher of a school, science mm -hmm. teacher. And uh, he had uh, scouts, and they met up in the loft of our garage. With, uh, I, let's see, what did they call them then? They had a name, it wasn't cadets. For the Boy Scouts? Boy Scouts, yeah. Um, it was kind of a special troop. And I, mm -hmm. I, I remember them meeting up there. He was interested in the boys, you know. Eagle Scouts? No, it wasn't the Eagle Scouts. <laughs> How many, okay, how many um, members did you have in your troop? Was it a large troop? I don't remember. <coughs> no. mm -hmm. We used to march in Memorial Day parades. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. they, uh, we'd go from church to church. Usually it was on a Sunday. They had the, the parade. And uh, they start with the Methodist church, gather them there, and then go by the... Uh, Brethren Church, and then up to Lutheran and Otter Bine. And we all carried a bouquet, usually peonies. Mm. And we'd uh, march up along the highway, along the school, and uh, up Springville Road to the cemetery. Springville Cemetery. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. We'd march there and put our bouquets on the graves, and then we'd have the uh, military men there to sh shoot their volley. Mm -hmm. 
Did they have a Halloween parade too? Pardon? Did they have a Halloween parade? When you were Yes, uh Did you go Halloweening? <laughs> Trick or treating? Well, <laughs> starting with my brother when he was small, mother would give him some corn and he would go over to the neighbors, Quitzes, and he'd take a handful and lay it on the porch. Now that was Halloweening. Back way back then. <laughs> you, you laid <laughs> he was just a little shaver, as they oh, called him. Oh. And uh, so he would go and he'd lay them by the hands full. He wouldn't throw them. He'd just put them by the hands full on the porches. <laughs> but then uh, when we went, we didn't, it wasn't Halloween like they have today. Mm -hmm. I can remember it was more trick than treat. <laughs> 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 We'd take a spool, a sewing spool, and notch it. We'd put a pencil in, we'd wrap string around the spool, and we'd hold it up to the windows, and then we'd yank it and make a rattle, you know, <laughs> at the homes. So it, uh, I wouldn't call it trick or treating like we have now. You didn't throw eggs, did you? No, no nothing. <laughs> that was didn't later. Didn't do any damage. <laughs> <laughs> no damage. No. But you dressed up in costumes. I remember one parade where the neighbor and I, well, I was past 12 then, because uh, my neighbor was on Kaufman Street there, and uh, Grace, Grace and Kaufman. But anyhow, we dressed up like a cat. The two of you. And she had the top part, <laughs> and I had the back part. <laughs> You probably couldn't see where you were going, huh? No. <laughs> I was so bent over. <laughs> I had the tail to wag. <laughs> you were in the parade? We were, we were in the parade, yes. <laughs> and we got up to where the judge's stand was, which was near uh, the Dinsmore store there on 3rd Street. And uh, I had to sit down. I was so <laughs> we came apart. <laughs> That was the last parade I think we were in. <laughs> it was memorable. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And they had the band parades. They used to come down Rake Street. We could stand on the porch and watch, yeah. When we first were here, they came down Rake Street. We didn't have to go anywhere. They'd watch all the way around town. How long did the, has the have you heard the trumpeters in Boiling Springs at Christmas Eve? Well, this Christmas, I was telling Mary, I thought I heard one at midnight. I didn't realize it was someone until they had finished. I thought, well, I wonder if that was a, one of the players, the horn. I saw, I heard just the one horn. Mm. Did you hear them? No, yeah, because we're not here oh, anymore. Oh, you weren't here. No. So, but that's been a wonderful tradition. I know. For years, and there have been Seven, eight trumpeters. Did you know about this? Mm -hmm. Oh, my. Roy Spangler. Did you know Roy, Roy Spangler? Spangler. Mm -hmm. he, he, uh, was he the Paul one Stricker? that did it? Paul Stricker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was quite a group of them. And David Payton has done it. Mm -hmm. What do they More do? Me? At Christmas well, Eve? At they... Christmas Eve, they started in Mount Holly at, this is when we first moved here, at Deer Lodge, and they play at Christmas carols. And they go to all these places, but they end in Boiling Springs. That's their ending spot. Mm. And it's always at midnight mm -hmm. for us, because we're the end. And they play carols on every under each street. Right. It is so beautiful. I and mean, we amazing. would not go to bed until we heard that. And sometimes they weren't there till one, one thirty. Or we'd go to bed and then all of a sudden we'd hear the trumpets, we'd all have to get up and go out and say hi to them. Cause and I take them. I have a video. I don't know if we still have that. We should give that to the historical site. When they did it 50 years, mm -hmm. they oh, came out here years. and we made them stand here and we videotaped them doing it for their 50th year anniversary. But it is just mm -hmm. a very special thing because you hear them in the distance mm -hmm. coming. Mm -hmm. It really was, it was our Christmas Eve. I mean, that was it. You didn't go to bed till you had the trumpeters come. And they would call. We were lucky. They would call me and say, well, when are you get home from church? What time do you get home from church? Mm -hmm. We'd say when, and then they, they would make sure they would stop at our street right after yeah. church. Mm -hmm. 
Larry Sugart was the one on the later years. Do you know Betty and Emery Sugart up on Springville Road? Their son, he had a group together too, mm -hmm. come around. Mm -hmm. It was wonderful. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, if I find that video, I'll have to ship that down to you guys. That is a really neat thing that happens, that happened. And then, uh, I don't know if you knew, uh, let's see. Well, you remember when the clock tower was built and, mm -hmm. and dedicated? Yeah, Dad had. Because your dad he had was the drawn, architect. Yeah. Drawn original plans for that. Mm -hmm. Do you still have the original plans? You know, I think he he had drawn a picture of it too, and I think Dr. Davis has that. He had it framed. Hmm. There was a. Uh, fruit uh, stand they had up there near Allenbury Hill. Is, is it that walk that goes by the bubble? Yeah. Do you remember that fruit stand? I don't remember it, no, but I've heard them talk of it. Yeah, I've heard that too. Uh -huh. it was, I heard there was a hot rod club there and then later. What? A hot rod club. The, the, the school, some of the boys had a club there and they drive their cars in there. I'm not familiar with that. Uh -huh. The caves there, I remember my brother saying he had gone in those. Which cave? The ones in the Behind the Neelys. The Neelys, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Easter time, the churches used to go together and go up on Allenbury Hill before they had all the buildings up there. Paul Strickler would pay his, play his uh, horn. And uh, oh, oh, they they'd have their service, sunrise service up there. Oh, on the hill. Up on the hill. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, that was then. Was it an orchard then? Was there an orchard, or what was up there? I guess there just, was. Just fields. I don't know. I don't know when they uh, if they tore out that orchard. You know, when they started building the mm -hmm. Hill. Yeah, there, weren't horse, there weren't any uh, houses there when we went up. There weren't. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. That was cold. Cold and it would be cold and windy up there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Yes, swallow what the whistle, huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anything we can cover? <laughs> well, yeah, Gina, is there anything else that we missed? I'm sure we missed something. <laughs> Jane was very good friends with Evelyn Brenman. Did you ever interview her? I yeah. I met with her, or I talked to her some. Um, she had a lot of history. Yeah, she loved history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, she kept all the clippings, you know, about Boiling Springs and people, and mm -hmm. she was a remarkable person. So, how long have you lived in the house, your house, where you are now? Well, since I was 12, we since moved you were 12, when you I was 12. Yeah. We rented at first, and then it came up for sale. And we didn't know where we would go, so we just thought we'd stay there. <laughs> we purchased it. Mm -hmm. yeah. We had good times there. Before they built next door there, we had uh, an archery range. <laughs> oh, really? We had a big bale of hay, you know. And, Jack and I had bow and arrows. <laughs> we learned to make our own arrows. Jean, you, you garden quite a bit. How did you develop the your interest and in love of that? I guess through Mother Mara primarily. She and Dad, they always had a garden. And she loved her flowers. So we got in. I guess a little bit of it rubbed off. <laughs> <laughs> do you also grow roses, or what do you primarily I grow? Have, I have a few roses, but Mother was the one who she specialized in the roses. I think one time she had about 48 plants of wow. roses. I still have a few of hers. Your mother had the beautiful rose gardens, and Jean had the wonderful animals. <laughs> of all assortments. Mm -hmm. 
and ponds for them to swim in. I mean, it's like the hotel when you go there. If you're a pet, it's the place to be. <laughs> Outside accommodations, inside accommodations. Pools. Oh, it's been a good place to grow up here in Bourne Springs. Yeah, I think. I good. worked away for a while out in Cleveland and before I worked around here. And uh, it's always good to come home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, what did you do for work? Well, I was with my father for a while after I came out of college. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I was interested in occupational therapy. So I went into occupational therapy, and uh, I worked out, that's when I worked out in Cleveland mm -hmm. for a number of years. There was a teaching hospital, kind of a county hospital out there, and they had students in, uh, in therapies, you know, and doctors doing residency there, mm -hmm. and that was most fascinating. I met different ones from different countries. Mm -hmm. and I enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I still correspond uh, with an Indian girl. Well, she, I shouldn't call her girl. She was a little eight-year-old when her mother came over to be with their father. He was there taking his res residency in, uh, at the hospital. And uh, I got to know the family. And the, the parents have passed away now, but I still correspond at Christmas time with her. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, she has two boys, and one is married, had been married, and well, still married, but he married first, and then just this past year, the second one married. And she has a little granddaughter. Her first son had a granddaughter. They were expecting the second. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been interesting, you know, mm -hmm. to that know talk. someone of another culture like that. Mm -hmm. And they made the best Indian food. <laughs> <laughs> Made your nose perspire <laughs> so much. Uh, that's the greatest thing, I think, in uh, being in the work world. Is you make lifelong, lifelong friends. And uh, they become your treasures. Mm -hmm. So it's been a full life. No, um, I know you also paint or do you, you, you also produce art? How, how did you get involved with that? The art? Mm -hmm. Well, I use it uh, in my work you know, from time to time, you know, designing and uh, I didn't paint pictures per se. Yeah. Yeah. It's more design work. Okay. Yeah. She's made dolls that are beautiful. I what? Dolls. Oh, yeah. I made <laughs> I so she's very creative. <laughs> so you keep busy. Huh? You still keep busy. <laughs> Too busy. Too much to be done. <laughs> yeah. I enjoy so many things, you know, and yeah. you see things that you can do and would like to do, but there's the time to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, with your photography, where where do you primarily focus? Or nature, primarily. Around here, or? Well, I got into, uh, she mentioned the monarch, you know. Mm -hmm. And I got inquisitive about where they came from, where they laid their mm -hmm. eggs and that sort of thing. I wanted to uh, see if I could <coughs> photograph the development of it. And I made a few mistrials. I went <laughs> out to, brought things home that had nothing to do with the monarch. <laughs> And then one day I was driving out, I was coming home past the doctor's, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with our doctors, one of Springs Medical, that's the best mm -hmm. place. But I was coming past there and I saw on some milkweed that a uh, monarch mm -hmm. landed. So I pulled off the road and I watched it, you know, and uh, I saw it bend its tail up under a leaf on a milkweed. So I went over after it departed, the monarch flew away, I uh, went over and looked and it was an egg. So I brought it along home and I uh, watched it develop. Mm. And it's about the size of a pinhead, it's very tiny. 
and eventually a little caterpillar come out, very minute. And they eat their egg first for nourishment. And they grow from there for about two weeks. And then uh, after two weeks, I guess it'd be about an inch and a half, two inches long. Mm. And then it's fascinating, it fastens its tail up under a branch, a leaf, and then it just drops down into a J. They call it the J position. And it hangs there for a short while, and then there so it disappears. It, that skin all comes off, shrivels up, up to where it's attached, mm -hmm. shakes that off, and then you've watched this, Mary. It reduces in size, keeps getting smaller and smaller until you have, it's like a little oil emerald about size and shape of a thumb, thimble. Mm. And that's the chrysalis. And in about 11 days, it becomes transparent and you can see the wings mm. of the uh, monarch, butterfly. And then it's that uh, metamorphosis. It changes, you know, from the worm into a butterfly, and finally the casing breaks open, and it comes out, and its wings are very wilted looking. They're not developed. But it hangs there until it pumps fluid into the wings, mm -hmm. and they harden until it can fly, and off it goes. That was a very fascinating project. <laughs> but I, oh, yeah. And then I got the... Uh, Black swallowtail. I got interested in that and did the same thing with that. So that's primarily a lot of my things, you know, just uh, watching nature develop. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful slide presentation of that on our butterfly. Really? Oh, wonderful. She came to my classroom a couple times and presented it. It was fascinating. I've just been interested in nature. Very, very pretty. From the time I rolled a little one around in my mother's mixing bowl. <laughs> <laughs> So it's, it's just some of God's marvels, and I just uh, marvel how great he is. <laughs> she had a wonderful mother to let her do all this. Honestly, no kidding. No kidding. I, no kidding. She is, she's telling you the truth. It would, because if you go in, and I'm telling you, the living room would have like this whole area that was all cordoned off, because Jean had something going on there. <laughs> something. Pheasant eggs, or a little baby duckling, or something. Well, it's fascinating to watch things develop. And she has such patience because I'm telling you, her ducks can be tough ducks. Mm. Mm. Pet ducks are not pets sometimes. You want to just <laughs> shoot them across the whole yard. They're nasty. In mating yeah. season, they're nasty. Well, Trooper's pretty good. He's not nasty. Right, but sometimes they are. Well, yeah. yeah I'd go down there and you'd be. Broom, she would have little whisk brooms tied around her legs to keep them back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, there. So Did you ever have cats and dogs? Patience. like Growing up. Yeah. Yeah, my mm -hmm. brother had a dog and I, I would have cats. Mm -hmm. My brother, he got this dog as a pup. My uncle brought him up from Virginia and Jack had wanted the dog and I, I don't know if my parents gave him permission or not, I hope. <laughs> yeah, my uncle bought the dog as a pup. And he charged my brother five cents per inch of tail, and he paid him 35 cents for the, for the dog, for the pup. <laughs> so. And what kind of dog was this? Oh, he was a hound dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard to keep him tied up. I think he joined the war effort. <laughs> so. But you had cats then. And I always did. I like cats too. But then when I got into birds and ducks and things, they, they you couldn't have mix. cats. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, Could you tell us a little bit about what Boiling Springs was like during World War II? Well, they'd have the blackouts, you know, the sirens would sound, and Dad and Jack. Jack was in the Boy Scouts, he was a messenger. Dad's uh, job was to come up here to the corner and stop all cars, Every, all the lights had to be extinguished for an air raid. Mm, mm -hmm. And uh, the boys would be messengers, he would go from one corner to another corner just to 
verify things and check out. But uh, I can remember we had the four shades turn out all the lights. And they would have this practice, you know, in case we were ever attacked. Was there a siren or anything like that that would sound? There would be a or? siren, yeah. And then uh, everyone would report to duty. <coughs> and I had a cousin who, uh, in Carlisle, they kept bunkers uh, supplied with food in case there was an attack. Mm -hmm. you know. But there was always that effort. I remember uh, Jack going out and gathering milkweed, you know, and they made parachutes, I think it was, out oh. of the uh, milkweed. That's silk. Mm -hmm. And then the women rolled bandages. They would take over sheets, you know, and make them so tear them in strips and, and wrap for bandages. Everybody was in the war effort. Do you remember rationing? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Sugar and gas and different foods. We had our, maybe, maybe still there's some ration books around. <laughs> <laughs> what was that like for you? Well, we just learned to do without sometimes, you know, or, or uh, divvy up, you know, and divide it up until it would last. Now, with your parents being uh, gardeners, did you have a victory garden? We had a victory garden. What, what, did, what did they grow? Yeah, we had lettuce and vegetables, and yeah, we had a victory garden. Of course, that was easy. Everybody liked to garden anyhow. <laughs> yeah, you had it anyway. Well, you grew a lot of your own food. You grew a lot of your own food. You yes. probably canned. Yeah, mother canned, we canned, and that was before they had freezers, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, things we wanted to freeze, um, we would take into Wenger's there, you know, they had the big uh, freezer there, the big room. Mm -hmm. We'd put our winter coats on, you know, and we, we had a freezer in there, and we would go in. If you wanted anything, you couldn't go into the kitchen freezer. <laughs> you had drive to Carlisle yeah. and get your things out and we'd always put our winter coats on because it was cold. Did you, did you rent a space in there? Mm -hmm. They had big uh, units, you know, that uh, you, you packed your things in. I remember so, that. <laughs> and we went, we had butchering, my grandfather being on the farm, we would, longer, we yeah, would butcher, butcher, get up early and go up on butchering day and the women would have the cooking to do and there's one, <laughs> One lady, she came up, uh, she was a neighbor girl, neighbor uh, woman, an older lady, and her her job was to clean the intestines mm -hmm. you know, and scrape, and then mm -hmm. they used that to make sausage, you know, they, mm -hmm. they would uh, work that onto a long tube, you're probably familiar with that, mm -hmm. and then they would crank the sausage and they would keep pulling out the, the sausage. That was a that was a cold day too. <laughs> well, would you some of that meat you would get? Pardon me. You you got some of the of the meat then yes. to bring home. Yes. Like oh, hams. They had always shared with us, mm -hmm. and that helped during the depression. Yeah, that's where you get a lot of your meat. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And wood. He had uh, a woods where he would take down trees and see we we fueled our furnaces then with wood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, he would chop it up and bring it down on his pickup truck, and then that was a job for Jack and I too. We would have to uh, take our arm loads full of the uh, chopped wood and take it down to the basin and rank it up, you know. And mm -hmm. So we had it for fuel. Mm -hmm. We were fortunate that way. Some yeah. people didn't have that. Jane, fast forward to the. Um, 60s and the civil defense drills. Did you have civil defense drills at your high school? We did, I don't recall. I remember we always did. Mm -hmm. And it scared me to death in the 60s. 50s. I know they had drills where we'd have to go outside. Mm -hmm. Fire drills, they were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, this was for the, the nuclear problems, the scares and everything. Yeah, but it was the same, you know, like World War II, you had to 
drills and it's the same. It's frightening. And now they do the um, children do that um, lockdown. It's called. Oh, no. So it's the same thing. I mean, it seems like every generation has some concern that we have to deal with with that. That's yes, what they deal with today in the schools. It's mm -hmm. entirely different. Yeah. They used to deal with smoking. <laughs> They yeah, still do. What this developed into, yes, it's just uh, things have advanced, not for the good sometimes. Mm -hmm. And fishing day, you know, that we had fishing, trout fishing back then, and that time they would come early, it would be dark, and they would uh, build fires around the lake. You know, keep warm, the fishermen keep warm. Dad and Jack, and they used to have a friend come up from uh, the Harrisburg area who liked to fish. And uh, they would go fishing and then come in, clean the fish. <laughs> <laughs> and then Dad and Jack had built a boat. And it was more like a, I don't know why, a very substantial one. It was broad, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, when that wasn't in use, fishing, why we kids would get it and we'd put in the oars and that time you didn't have to have a boat registered. We would just mm -hmm. get in and go all over the lake. Mm -hmm. so, um, we did, we'd grow up, like you say, we'd grow up the race up to the pond and we were so fortunate here. We had so many activities. You know, we could hike to the mountains. We girls, when we were teens, we would hike out to the lean to, you know, at the mountain. And we'd stop at Mr. Spar's uh, orchard and get some drop apples to eat on the way. But uh, that was one of our entertainments, you know, to hike. Mm -hmm. Hike and but, uh, swim. We had ice skating, we had swimming, we had boating, fishing. Hiking, you know, it's just a, a variety of mm -hmm. activity. We didn't have these phones and things to walk around and punch. <laughs> <laughs> Entirely different age. Mm. So I guess. All right. Well, thank you, Jean, for uh, for talking and sharing some pretty amazing stories with us today. Well, I don't know if we've learned anything different. I, <laughs> I learned quite a bit, so I, at least one person's benefited. I think we all have. Well, yeah, thanks, you all. thanks for sharing. Yeah. Yeah. You, you've uh, known a lot of the town, being in uh, the business you are. Yeah. It's, a, you it's, unique, it's a unique, unique place mm -hmm. to grow up in. It's, yeah. There are fewer and fewer towns and villages like this. We got uh, our car cultural learning through uh, Miss uh, Hackman. Hackman. She was oh, yeah. in the arts, but she had a liberal arts club. And okay. uh, she would see that those who belonged to the club would get out to Broadway shows down Hershey, you know, and uh, uh. That she would take, take us. Uh, over to Gettysburg, and but uh, we certainly enjoyed the shows, Broadway shows. We even saw Andy, Get Your Gun, you know, Martin, Mary Martin, and Oklahoma, and Gordon Ray. And what, what was the club called? The Liberal Arts Cultural Cultural Arts Club. Well, it was a liberal arts. Liberal arts. Yeah, was she the uh, Latin teacher? Uh, Hackman. She was English. English, English teacher. Yeah. She lived in Carlisle. Uh, you think? Miss mm -hmm. Lackey was from Carlisle. You know the uh, secretary. She was from Carlisle. Mm -hmm. Who was the principal? Uh, William Rice. You know the other the school named after him. Okay. Mm -hmm. He he was a wonderful man, but when it came to discipline. <laughs> <laughs> The teacher would send, you know, the people to uh, the office, and you could hear the sound 
resound through the hallway. <laughs> we just sat there and our seats kind of shuddered. <laughs> Well, it wasn't you. <laughs> he got his flat paddle. <laughs> now they can't, they can't I, listen I, like that. I listened, but I did not talk. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> All right. It's okay. Join me. We're pretty much there. Yeah. Well, again, thank you so much for... Uh, You're welcome.